Okay, starting turn number five of the Legend of Drizzt board game, adventure number two. So our heroes are a bit beaten down, but uh, they're not out yet. And Bruner does have a healing potion you can use. So hopefully we'll get a chance to do that. All right, now it's Driz's turn. I would really like to go up there and take out that hunting drake, but actually I think we can do that. Drizzt has a base speed of seven, but he also has a plus two on his speed so he can move nine. So he has plenty of speed to move around that hunting drake, like over here. That'd be the only options. And you can see he can definitely do that, even if he goes around Bruner, which he doesn't have to do. He can walk through Bruner. But he can go, for example, he can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Even if we don't do corner to corner, there's still plenty of speed to come all the way over here. So Driz comes over here, and he's going to attack the Hunting Drake with his uh, at will power Icing Death. He's going to get a plus 6 on that attack. I went ahead and switched back to the dice tray. Like I said, until I 3D print a new base for my dice tower, I'm just going to use this because they don't bounce out as often. And that's a 12 plus 6, so that's going to be 18. That's certainly enough to hit because you can see his uh, Icing Death gets a plus 6. And the Hunting Drake only has a 14, so yeah, definitely, definitely hit and killed the Hunting Drake. Hunting Drake goes down. Actually, I'll start a new pile here because this is already five. All right, so let's update for Drizzt. So that's unnecessary. He moved, he attacked. So he does get treasure. Let's go ahead and take care of that now. What was this? So when your hero hits an adjacent monster with attack. Okay, so we, yeah, we don't want to use that. Or do you have to use it? Let me see. When your hero hits an adjacent monster with an attack, the attack deals plus two. Hmm. The way that reads, it almost reads like that's an automatic thing that happens and you don't have the option of making it op uh, of selecting when you're going to use it. I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm not choosing to use that right now. All right, I mean, like I didn't choose to use that for the hunting drake. But, I, but the way it reads, it almost seems like you have to. I'm not sure, though. All right, so we do a flask of oil. Um, I've seen that before, so we'll deal with that some other time. Take that, take the hunting drake off the board. And let me actually cross him out. All right, so Drizzt is on an unexplored edge, so he will explore. And I think we're probably close to the, uh, the exit because we've had those two tiles that we got rid of. So volcanic vent, and that's going to go this way, nope, this way, so kind of a dead end tile here. And so we got a black tile, and now we're going to place a monster. And we got a goblin archer, so that is this guy think. Yeah, he's got the bow and arrow, so I'm sure that's him. Focus. So we'll place the Goblin Archer on the mushroom stack. And so we got a GA. We got a black, so we have an encounter. And the GA will activate. No villain, no villain. encounter, but we can cancel this if it's terrible. Acid Spray. Attack each hero on the tile. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cancel it because we don't have a lot of hit points, so... And this does damage either way, so we're going to cancel that one. That's going to go here, so this pile of experience is gone. So you can see we got two, 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 and one for five goes up there so yes we had an encounter but we canceled it and now the goblin archer will activate 
If it's adjacent, it's not. If the goblin's within two, it is. It attacks the closest hero with barbed arrows. Does damage either way. Okay, so I have the stance token on Twinkle, so if we if it hits, I can reduce that attack by one. I can reduce the damage from the attack by one. So the gets a plus seven on the attack. Driz has a 16 AC. So, ooh, fo uh, rolled a one, so he missed. Uh, he still does one damage because that. However, we'll go ahead and take the stance token off of Twinkle and reduce that damage by one so Driz doesn't take damage. All right, and that will be the end of turn number five for Drizzt, taking us into turn number five for Bruner. So Bruner's down to three, so I think the first thing Bruner needs to do is use his item to gain two points. And we need to use that during our hero phase, so let's go ahead and do that. So Bruner's going to gain two hit points, taking him up to five. Using his potion of healing, so he chugs that really quick, and now this is gone. Now Brunner, let's see, I think we'll have Brunner move over this way because I'm, if I bring him up here, he's not going to be able to explore. And I don't have any projectiles or anything, so. All right, so Brunner's gonna move, um, let's say one, two, three, four, Movement speed of five, so he's got plenty of movement. He's gonna move over here and explore what's up this way. So Brunner, nothing moved, did not attack, no treasure, and we are exploring. So again, we have to be getting close to that tile. And that's the one. All right, so stuff happens, but before we get too worried about what's up here, we still have to play out this tile like normal. So let's do that. So that's a white tile. So no encounter. Um, but we do place a monster for that tile. And we got a goblin cutter. So let's get a goblin cutter, which is this guy here. And we'll place the Goblin Cutter onto the Mushroom Stack up here in the, in the Broken Door room. So Bruner got a Goblin Cutter. No encounter, Villain, Goblin Cutter. Okay, so that takes care of that tile, but now once we reveal that tile, we have some other things that we have to do. So it says... Well, actually instead of drawing, so that's that's rare, so let me come back to that, but it says uh, when, you, when you reveal the broken door tile, Mithril Hall has been found, but years of neglect have taken their toll. The door has been smashed open, and the stone tunnels are now home to the denizens of the Underdark. To make matters worse, Artemis and Treri has caught up to you. You must defeat the foes that surround you and recover the dwarves' ancestral crown. All right, so I got a little bit ahead of myself by placing that monster, but it's very rare that uh, that this is the case. But it says, instead of drawing a monster card for the new tile, the active hero's player takes the Artemis and Trari villain card and places the Artemis and Trari figure on either mushroom patch on either mushroom patch on the start tile. As a villain, Artemis acts at the start. Okay, so Artemis gets placed down here on the start tile. Our choice, either here or here. We'll put him here because it's a bit farther away. So we grab the Artemis and Trari villain figurine. And we'll put him down here on this mushroom patch. It's just because it's a bit farther away. And I guess we don't have to do the Goblin Cutter at all, but let me just keep reading here. Place the Ancient Throne Tile next to the closest unexplored edge 
of the broken door tile. Okay, well, here we go. Then each monster draws... Then each player draws a monster, so yeah, we would place the cutter either way. Alright, so let's do this first. So, let's get Artemis and Trari's card, put it down here. Take the Ancient Throne, place it here. I believe we just put the token up here. Alright, let me read this again. This is all brand new to me, I've never played this one before. Place the ancient throne tile next to the closest unexplored edge. Then each player draws a monster card and places the corresponding monster figure on any square of either the ancient throne or broken door tile. And then place the crown token on either square of the throne depicted on the ancient throne tile. A hero in any of the six squares adjacent to the throne... Adjacent to the throne square can pick up the crown taken at the end of his or hero, her hero phase. Place the crown token on the hero's card. Okay, so the heroes win the adventure when they defeat Artemis and any hero has taken the crown. Hmm, okay. So, let's deal with the monsters. So first of all, we've already dealt with the Bruner's monster, but we can choose to place him here or here or here. I think it said... I think it said we could do either of these or there, but let me read that one more time, just to be sure. Then each player draws a monster card and places the corresponding monster figure on any square, oh, any square, of either the ancient... Okay, so we can place the monster wherever we want. So that being the case, let's see what are the tactics. So if it's within one tile, it moves adjacent... Otherwise, the Goblin Cutter... Okay. So what we can do... Says, I mean, he says we can literally put them anywhere we want. If I put it here, he's going to come up here and attack. I can delay the attack just by moving him over here. But that's Bruner's monster. Now we need to draw one more monster for Drizzt. So now this one will be the monster for Drizzt. Um, okay, so that's there. And then the, swarm, the Spider Swarm. So the spider swarm, and we'll do the same thing. I mean, we can put it anywhere, anywhere we want. So, seems to the, seems to me it's to our advantage to put it as far away as possible, so that we can move up to it and attack before it gets a chance. Let me just see what its tactics are. So it moves one tile. This one moves one tile. We may actually want to. Blah, 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 let's see. So they both have an armor class of 12. We may actually want to move them a little bit closer because Bruner's speed is only 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, we don't want them to be out of reach. But I don't want both of them coming in on us. So let's bring the Goblin Cutter up here. So that's going to be where the Goblin Cutter gets placed. All right. Now, all right, let's get caught up here. So that was the Goblin Cutter. And now, actually, Artemis. So there's no encounter. Just making sure I'm all caught up. So there's no encounter, but Artemis will activate. All right. So, Artemis and Trari. Whenever you place a monster, you can place the monster on any tile with an unexplored edge. I feel like I have the wrong card. Yeah, I think I have the wrong card. I don't think this is the villain card. So, let me... Because it doesn't have any tactics. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So I guess Artemis and Trari doubles up as a uh, playable character or something. So let me put these away. Alright, now here we go. Artemis and Trari. If 
he's adjacent, he's not. If he's within one, he's not. Otherwise, he moves one tile closer. Okay, so he's just going to move. So he's going to go over here. And that's it. He's done. Now, Goblin Cutter will activate. And he's just going to move one tile closer. So he's going to move to this mushroom stack. Because he's in, cause he's moving a tile. Okay, finally, that is it for turn five.